John Van Beesbrook getting the start for the Rangers his third start in a row all on the road Doug Sotar planned for the game in Calgary tomorrow night Richard Brodeur coming off his best game of the season his last game a 5 nothing whitewash for the Calgary Flames and they say he played in that game like he did back in 82 when he had a great year pudgy little guy isn't he it used to be it used to be he's in real good shape he went into a training session got himself in a good condition all Western Canada officials tonight Bob Hall 34 from Penticton Ryan Bozak the linesman from Swift Current and rookie linesman Brad Lazarowicz from Vancouver the Rangers start with Greshner Deppel on the right McKechnie on the left Patrick and Laidlaw on defense playing catch with it now Butcher and Lidster the defense for the Vancouver Canucks and Greshner angles Lidster moving forward along with Deppel Petri Skriko who had a hot game here in the five nothing whitewash of Calgary cleared that one back down Skriko starting on left wing with Barry Peterson the former Boston Bruin at center and Jim Sandlack on right wing as in comes Tony McKechnie spun one to the slot it was checked away from Patrick and Barry Peterson had it knocked away from Greshner JD you've been through a few of these coaching changes in your playing career atmosphere a lot of change a lot of uncertainty or not it can be tense some players say it was tense before the change I think it's up to the older players to lead the charge in a situation like this here's Rich Sutter going down Don Maloney moving along you saw Rich Sutter there he plays left wing even though he's a right handed shot he'll cut into the net as much as possible he'll draw penalties that should have been a penalty there against Giles Tony Tanti turning Pierre LaRouche nearby, but it's dumped off to Sundstrom, then turned in front by Sutter. Tandy with a backhander, and that one knocked away. And the fans want penalties twice. Rich Sutter the first time, and Rich Sutter the second. Thinking in the Vancouver lights that they've drawn them, but not so as Tanty turns. Leaned on by Terry Karkner. Vancouver, well, that's three. Skating. Vancouver skating very well. You're right, that's three times they've been hauled down. Rangers fortunate. Vancouver skating well when they draw those situations. Phil Esposito, in looking at this hockey game, said we may see Tom Laidlaw up on left wing as he has dressed seven defensemen. He said we also may see Willie Huber up front on the power play. Because of his size, he would like to see some congestion in front of the other team's net. Then on the immediate left, you see Don Jackson. Phil being equipped with a wireless mic tonight. And a feature will be done on his first night of coaching for a later Ranger game. Same unit that started the game on defense for Vancouver, Lidster and Butcher, as they try to turn out, and it's Mike Ridley knocking it down. Lidster will see a lot of ice time. He plays more than any other defenseman. He's by far their best defenseman. And very very underrated his name was not on that list that the fans vote for for being an all-star he is an all-star they try to slot and Tambellini shot is patted away by Van Beesbrook and cleared back out by Shell Samuelson butcher goes back butcher just yanking it along to Lidster will try to continually set the Ranger lines because they are changed slightly from uh, the days of Ted Sater's coaching along it is sent puck kept along by Richter and it's wound away from both Laidlaw and Samuelson. Rick Lance pinning. Popped it back, and Laidlaw will take over. Now on this line, it's Erickson on the left side. Pierre LaRouche is on the right wing, and the centerman is Mike Ridley. They make a change and bring out Kissio along with Kelly Miller. Still out on the ice is Erickson. Van Beesbrook sets it up behind, and it is Laidlaw angling for Erickson. Taps ahead to Kissio with Miller moving in. Kelly Kissio hooked at by Richter, a pass over to Erickson, who has spun around. Erickson got it to Miller. It swung away, but Tom Laidlaw keeps play moving for the Rangers to Miller, trying to turn away from Lance. Shouldered hard by Lowry. Up controlled by Erickson. Quick shot by Kissio is wide. Patrick able to keep for the Rangers, flinging it along, and it bounced off Kelly Miller. Erickson ridden to the corner by Lance. Then Lowry comes in to press Miller once more. Peterson trying to pump it ahead, and it's Richard Brodeur tapping behind. Vancouver don't have a lot of scoring punch, so they really try to play a sound defensive game, and you have seen it here so far in the first period, even though we're only not yet four minutes into the first period. They're trying to take up their checks quite well in that defensive zone. Vancouver concentrating on keeping the score down. They have to. Both these teams have to, because they both lack scoring. And here is Grieco with a shot. Down by Van Beesbrook and played back out 
Along with it comes McKechnie. Moves in with Walt Podubny, and it squirts in on Brodeur, who just jams it away. Barry Peterson flips it along to Sandlack. Sandlack just wastes one from center ice into on Van Beesbrook, who flings it back ahead. And that one touched by McKechnie across two lines. 15-52 to go in the first period of play. No score in the here in the first period with the Rangers and Vancouver Canucks scoreless. It is Tonti, bothered by Greshner. Along for Sundstrom, but Terry Karkner takes over. Sundstrom bothering him. Shell Samuelson there to help. Sundstrom wanted to kick, but it's back for a shot. By Rick Sutter. 1-0 Vancouver. Rick Sutter with a very accurate shot, but it was the work of Sundstrom in the corner that got the puck out to Sutter. Everybody seemed to want to play for the puck. Look at everybody look down. Sundstrom's going to get it out finally right there and find an open man. Two men were on Sundstrom. Rick Sutter was wide open. He got control and a quick low vintage Sutter wrist shot. one nothing Vancouver. Tony Tanti for Vancouver drops in. Van Beesbrook, uneven roll, sends it up for Don Maloney. Petit tries 15, to keep, but it's Ron Greshner looking ahead, but it's back checked away by Sutter and sent on for Tanti, but too far. Shell Samuelson down for the icing touch-up with 15-16 to go in the first period. We'll pick up the assists on Rich Sutter's goal. Mike, why don't you tell us the numbers you came up with today about coaches going behind the bench after a change, the first game back? Well, since the start of the 83-84 season, there have been now 16 coaching changes and 15, of course, first games for coaches taking over from the start of the season. And you'd think maybe, well, 10 or 11 I, of those would have been victories. Very one-sided. Seven wins, five losses, and three ties for the first game coaches. That really surprised me. <laughs> it surprised me you had the information in your briefcase, too. <laughs> A note of trivia, but we'll get to that in a moment as we have Walt Podubny. And again, we want to emphasize these lines so that you Laid can follow them. Laidlaw is the left winger right. and Jensen over on the right. And it is Melnick right defense. And on the left side for the Rangers, James Patrick. That one knocked away from Melnick and back through they come. Up the left wing, Taylor Hall has a man breaking at Smeal, but he's tightly checked by Jensen. So Lanz wants to reconnect with Hall. It comes near Smeal. Slots it, but it's off Tambellini and brought back up by James Patrick. Patrick for the Rangers, who trail in the game 1-0, moves it along to Jensen, who tries to penetrate, having a swing at it is Laidlaw. Richter one-hands it along to Smeal, and right there on him is Podubny. Then along to freight train the bunch gently is Richter, and we get a four-man tie-up and a face-off to result. The last time that the NHL went through an entire season without any in-season coaching changes, was the last year before expansion, 66, 67. And those of you who want to take a second uh, level of trivia, can you remember the six coaches from that year that went through the whole season? John Davidson did pretty well. Uh, not really, you're being nice. Brett Peterson is playing with sore ribs. He was nailed by Nick Fatiu when Calgary played here last week, or this week, excuse me. But he did not miss a game, had a few days to rest. And he's their best faceoff man in the defensive zone for Vancouver. Products of other organizations are Brent Peterson, spelled with a T, and Barry Peterson, spelled with a D. Both in action tonight for Vancouver as Patrick drops it back along, turning with it is Chris Jensen. Brodeur behind. It eludes him, and Podupny overskates, but recovers. Leaned on by Lowry, and the pass in front off Garth Butcher. Canucks leading in the game, one to nothing on Rich Sutter's goal as it's dropped back in by Lowry. Van Beesbrook just wafting it to the boards, and up with it is Jensen. Melnick with a good job creating interference. That gave Van Beesbrook time to shuffle the puck up, and Jensen got it out of the zone. The teams have to hold up the other wingers to buy time in your defensive zone. Vancouver, four points in the standings behind Los Angeles for fourth place in the Smythe, and Los Angeles has been hot lately, having only lost one of its last seven games. Head coach Tom Watt with Jack McElhardy to his left as the assistant Tom Watt, who has a master's degree in education, came out of the Canada College ranks. 15 years he coached in Toronto, the Varsity Blues. Very disciplined coach. Likes to play a defensive style. He understands that the team is not an offensive club at all. And he's got them playing pretty well. They're coming off a shutout. 
so often when we see coaches at the bench you'll see them looking up at the scoreboard and uh, they're not looking at what was just flashed there Rick, Rich Sutter's scoring statistics but rather at the time so that they can properly adjust their shift changes and then I think sometimes maybe they might be looking at that incidental information as Grico in the corner tried to throw one in front but that blocked away as Don Maloney goes in and is shoved to the boards by Sandlack. Petri Strico wanting to tear it away. See the Canucks right there with two men in deep. They had one up high. They are not getting trapped at all in their own zone. 13-29 remaining in the first period. One nothing. <laughs> oh, as we return to play, a chance for Petri Strico. It is Ridley shaking away from Strico along to Don Maloney as Ridley was decked hard. That one blocked away by Kurt Giles. Barry Peterson rolls for Strico. He scores. is a left winger who gets a lot of his scoring chances from the right side simple simply because he's a left-handed shot Van Beesbrook has no shot as there's going to be two men down in front of him look at Squeako with a quick shot two men lying in front of him no chance for Van Beesbrook as the goal scorer Petros Petri Squeako put it up high see how he faced the puck there on the right side of the ice the puck came to him in one motion he hit the top corner with a great shot Bill Esposito quite upset at the Rangers bench with the scoring of that goal. Two nothing the score in the game. Vancouver has two in the first 656 of Espo's first game. Kelly Kissio's shot sailed into the seats. But with so few in attendance here tonight, it appears less than half a house. It struck one of the empties. Shots on goal, eight. Vancouver, done for the New York Rangers. It's been a serious period for Vancouver. They played very well. Kelly Kissio still having trouble with that elbow since he's having a lot of trouble just bending it. He wears padding on the inside of the elbow pad. He fell on it twice this past Monday and when he played against New Jersey. Played with it in Vancouver. It was very sore. The hurts that do not show through the uniform. Barry Peterson and Petit got the assist on Strico's ninth at 6.56. One assist Sundstrom on Rich Sutter's goal at 4.24. It was a great pass by Peterson and Strico a wide open in that deep slot. And Vancouver have had a lot of good shots in that area. There's big Dave Richter. Very, very strong individual. Traded this past offseason along with Rich Sutter and a third rounder. J.J. Daniel and a second rounder who ended up being Kent Hawley this year in a fifth rounder in 87. There's Grico. Remember, left winger, but a right-handed shot, and he ends up on the other side of the ice for the majority of his scoring chances. He had three shots on goal. One has gone in. I believe we have uh, among the six defensemen playing tonight for Vancouver only uh, one left-hand shot, and he hasn't seen the ice yet. They are all right-handed shooting defensemen, and when we get a moment, perhaps, J.D., you can... Give us a notion as to what some of the potential problems might be with that as a sandwich at the Vancouver line and a penalty coming up as Tanti is ready to go with Kelly oh, Kissio. Baby. I believe that's Kissio and Tanti, and Kissio landed a right that came right through both players. A man that he land one on the chin. The referee Hall had his arm up. There was going to be a minor penalty called, and I'm not sure who it was to. Now they're trying to separate. I think that's Kissio. He was down on the ice and he got up as Tanti wanted to go with him. And then when Kissio got up, he just put a right hand right through and it landed on the butt. They're trying to separate the arms there more than anything else, so nothing happens. Esposito down 2 0. His team has not come out of the shoot like they had expected. Dante looks a little scarred up from that, but both head to the penalty boxes. We'll be back in just a moment. Lowry showing good speed, got a step on Karkner. Karkner gets the call, holding at 11.02, the first power play of the game for Vancouver. They operate at 20.3%. This is their 80th power play of the year opportunity, that is. Only St. Louis has had fewer chances against the Rangers. The Rangers the best road penalty killing unit in the National Hockey League. What will they try to do on the power play? Back feed the, the point? Feed the point. Rick lands and jam the net. Lipster a shot. Save. Rebound. Oh! No sooner said by John Davidson than done. 
Vancouver loved to get the puck to the point. They loved to jam the nets. This started when the Rangers lost the faceoff in their own zone. Vancouver controlled it. Not a hard shot by Lidster, but look who's standing in front all by himself. And Squeako put it past John Van Beesbrook. Again, on the right side of the ice, the left-handed shot. He pops it high, and the Rangers are down by three just over halfway through the first period. Squeako with a pair. Rich Sutter with one. And the debut has gotten off to a sour start. James Patrick angles off to Erickson. Down goes Kelly Miller. Up comes the arm of Bob Hall. And a penalty will be assessed to Vancouver. So the Rangers will get their first power play opportunity. And John, this is the time to have it now after being overwhelmed here in the shot totals. Now it's 12-5 and in goal 3-0. It's a power play chance here. We'll see what they do. Huber's on the ice. And I think Huber's going to be up front to try and stand in front of the net of Richard Bourdieu. The Rangers, obviously nervous. They're not skating well. Vancouver's skating at high speed. And when you have butterflies like that, the best thing to do is go out, bump somebody, hit them hard, and it knocks the butterflies out of your system. They don't have their skating legs whatsoever, but credit Vancouver, they are in high gear. The Rangers on the power play, Podubny with four, LaRouche with four, goals apiece lead the power play unit. Vancouver on the penalty killing unit, ranked 17th. Squeako has all three shorthanded goals for the club. Will this be a point-feeding Ranger power play now, and is that in contrast to the way it was before? I think they have to just look for the open shot, go to the net if their plan is to use Willie Huber in front. All right, through with it comes Ridley, James Patrick, then over to Pierre LaRouche. And tipped out of play by Garth Butcher, who has been hitting anything moving tonight that's not in stripes. Butcher's a physical player. He was very close to being demoted to the minors on their recent road trip. During the eight games since that road trip, he has been first star twice, third star once. In fact, on that road trip, he was going to go down, except for they caught a couple of players out after curfew, one being Doug Hallward, another being Maxwell. And uh, Maxwell, who now has a problem with a knee, Butcher sees that opportunity and has played well. Might mention that Hallward was traded today to Detroit for future consideration, so he's no longer a Canuck. Here's Patrick hammering one off the side of the goal, caught the outside of the post. LaRouche dips it for the corner, but it's slugged back off by a butcher, and the Rangers will have to regroup. The point men are Greshner and James Patrick, and they use Ridley, who is controlling it now. Willie Huber and LaRouche give away, and Peterson flips one. Tried to control into the corner and shoves James Patrick, but it's Ridley bringing it back out. Glad you've joined us tonight on Madison Square Garden Network, as it's Mike Ridley trying to center, and that one thrown away by Lowry. Vancouver really have the jump. They're getting to those loose pucks quickly. They're not sitting back, killing penalties. They're very aggressive. Rich Sutter on that turnover from Van Beesbrook. Sundstrom guides it, and along to get it is Greshner, and the penalty time is down to 45 seconds. Ron Greshner looking ahead. Now the Rangers have made a change. Deblois is out, along with McKegney, and on the opposite side, and moving in offside was Podubny. 7.05 left in the first 3 nothing Canucks. Handsome Harley Race, the self-proclaimed king of wrestling, joins Paul Orndorff to battle Rowdy Roddy Piper and Hulk Hogan in the featured attraction Monday night when MSG Network presents a live three-hour wrestling card. We bring the garden home on Madison Square Garden Network. What we've seen in this game is very similar to what we saw last night when you and I went to the Saddle Dome in Calgary, watched Pittsburgh walk in and beat the Flames. Pittsburgh were the much quicker of the two teams. And this, this game has carried the same pattern. Bill Esposito, as a player, has seen some coaching changes. And I would imagine the same advice you were passing along about taking the man and, and getting yourself back into the game will be that which he is giving not only at the bench tonight, but at the end of the first period, if this still seems a downer. We certainly haven't seen any quit in the Rangers this year. They fought back in Edmonton and tie it up late. They just haven't been rewarded for their hard work. They're down again here early. 14 seconds to go on the man advantage. Canucks can't clear. Deblois keeps it punched away from Giles. And Giles, without a stick, is able to play to Podubny. Right back along. It's floated by Deblois. But this play breaks down. Then comes to Podubny for a shot. High off Rodor. He covers. Penalty time is up. Again, the Rangers stay wide and get a scoring chance. Podubny shot that puck and went right into the midsection of Rodur. Rodur had to be six feet above the goal crease. Podubny was being forced. He had to rush his shot somewhat. And when that happens, the goaltender will move out. See the man coming at Podubny? He's got to shoot it. Brodeur smartly got out. And all Podubny did was shoot it into him. Richard Brodeur 
Dropped a lot of weight, huh? Oh, he really did. He got himself in a real good shape. He's the last player from the WHA, the old WHA, who in their first year, which was 72-73, Berger is the last player to still be playing in the National Hockey League. Just two years ago, there were three left. Mike Antonovich and Bob McMillan were the two previous ones to go away. As it is Litster turning away from LaRouche, tapping it out to center ice. Melnick and Laidlaw, the defense for the Rangers. They go with Kelly Miller, Erickson, and Jensen for a shot high off Lodeur. Miller drops it back, and it trickles for Litster. Jim Sandlack starts out, gets it on to Screeko, flips for Barry Peterson. Wedged by Melnick, and Screeko with an attempt at the hat trick. That was thrown away by Van Beesbrook, and back through to Erickson. Jan Eriksson loses to Skrico. Skrico moves back in to Barry Peterson. Flips in front, and Skrico taken out of the play by Melnick. Advance back out, and on with it comes Kelly Miller. Miller has Eriksson breaking up the wing, but is double teamed, and it's swept back out by Sandlack, who promptly steps into Karkner. Now Bartell and Karkner start shoving, and this will develop into more. There's two Vancouver Canucks there. Sandlack has joined it right here. And that kind of makes it tough with Terry Karkner. Somebody should get an additional penalty here. Look at this. Two Canucks there and one Ranger. It was Bartell and Karkner who had started it. Then Sandlack joined. And that's actually a third man. I don't know yeah. what Hall is going to call here, but there was you can see it, obviously. There was two yellow sweater, gold sweaters there, and one blue sweater. We'll see how it's called. Book reads altercation, and that certainly was one. And we saw three. <laughs> so we'll see if the referee saw what we saw. Oh, Don Jackson, who was a feisty defenseman when he plays up on the bench, showing emotion. How would you have described the practice this morning that we saw? Well, there was a lot of media attention here to start with. It's uh, quite a happening in Vancouver, who's, you know, Vancouver have not had a great teams over the years. and hasn't been a lot happening. And today it was almost like a, a circus atmosphere. Once the players got on the ice, they worked a lot of three on twos, two on ones, which basically are basic practices, and that's what Phil Esposito wants. He wants his team, that is not a high scoring team, to take advantages of two on ones, three on two. Rangers. In this game, it's been the other way, though. Vancouver's had all those opportunities. Of the large number of reporters locally, there was one who was called out of a session with the Prime Minister today to come here to the Pacific Coliseum to get words of wisdom from Phil Esposito. Lance tries to send it ahead. And gets it back again. Rick Lance moving on. Patrick across it came for Peterson shot that was deflected away by goalkeeper John Van Beesbrook. Don Maloney back through. Patrick advances up the wing. LaRouche a drive and that high off the glass. Ridley carried off by Brent Peterson. Petit taps, but it's taken by Don Maloney. Lost back to Petit, who while falling is able to clear ahead to Smeal. James Patrick for the Rangers with 4.48 to go in the first period of a 3 to nothing Vancouver advantage. Petit shoved off by Don Maloney. Laidlaw flips one, patted away. Behind, they center in front. LaRouche can't get a swing at it. And it's thrown away by Petit right out to Rich Sutter. Sutter moving on uh, Samuelson, then throws it in where Van Beesbrook can place to Kulak anticipating. But it's Sundstrom rammed by Samuelson. Puck taken by Rich Sutter, who shoved off by Ridley. A few more bumps now. Penalties, four minutes for roughing to Kartner, four minutes for roughing to Bartell, nothing to Sandlack, so referee oh, Hall saw things his way. It's Brodeur clearing away. Now five seconds left on the power play to the Canucks, and out of the box comes Shell Samuelson. Smeal goes down. Ridley able to get it to Huber, and it's in on Brodeur. Down to the last 90 seconds of this first period. Skrico flips, and Tom Laidlaw takes over, guiding it along to Tony McKegney. The first line out. Oh, go ahead. First positive thing of the period for the Rangers. They killed off that penalty very, very well. Just had the one shot to land from his own blue line, or from the Rangers' blue line, excuse me. We'll give you the line combinations again. It's Ridley with McKegney and Pierre LaRouche. Giles on defense with Patrick now on the right side, and in comes Patrick, drops back to Ridley. Right circle with a shot, sticks by Brodeur, and he's able to cover. Tony McKegney, physically very strong, went to the front of the net. Ridley delayed a little bit to make sure McKegney had got there, then he took a good shot. Brodeur, through traffic, made the save, covered up in the rebound. 
Don Jackson, you notice, next to Phil Esposito. And again, Jackson's role tonight. He's going to change the defenseman and be there for added support. You know, that shot by Ridley was a little bit too high. When you shoot a puck into the midsection of the goaltenders, they usually can cover up and not allow rebounds. You try and get it either down low or top corners. Down low, you have better chance of a rebound. That's just general on goaltenders, or it's specifically on Brodeur? No, that's general on goaltenders. Brodeur is a good uh, position goaltender. He's got a lot of experience. Very quick, as we saw just a moment ago, after he got a stick on that one, and then dove to the ice to trap. Been playing pro since 73, so you know he has lots of uh, professional experience. And I'll bet he faced a lot of shots in world hockey, because they went end to end a lot. On now comes Barry Peterson in that play offside. Bobby Hall could bring it in oh. on you a few times. <laughs> yeah. to see him. A few times with the Winnipeg Jets Good. storming in. And Rangers have had five of the last seven shots on goal. Barry Peterson played junior in Victoria, which is not far from Vancouver. Of course, last year he was with Boston. He was traded for Cam Neely in a first rounder in 87 from Boston. That first rounder, if Vancouver end up in the bottom of the heap, could be Pierre Turgeon, who could be a franchise player. I don't think Vancouver will be on the bottom of the heap, but that is always a possibility. Now, by franchise player, are you saying in the mold of, of the importance that Lemieux has been to Pittsburgh, let's say? You say he may be the best draft since the new. Canucks roll back in. Kirk Giles to take this one. Giles and Larry Melnick, the defense for the Rangers. It's the Greshner unit out now with Lucien Deblois. And across the way, Jensen. Thrown back in by Rich Sutter. Vancouver clogging the middle, clog the middle, clog the middle. It's very difficult to make passes. The middle of the ice is nothing but... Vancouver jerseys in the way. Karkner can't hold, so in the final 14 seconds of the period, it's set up for Big Shell Samuelson. Rich Sutter, splendid four checker, though his plus minus certainly down this year, down to a minus 15, which was the worst in the league coming into this week of play. That one dumped down as the horn sounds to end the first period. Phil Esposito at the bench has watched his charges yield three times. Rangers made the shot total respectable. 14 shots Canucks and 10 for the Rangers at one time. It was eight none. Screeko with a pair. Rich Sutter with one. Those were the goal scorers in this opening period. At the end of 20 minutes, Vancouver Coliseum. We are just 24 seconds into the second period. Jim Sandlack of Vancouver has been penalized for holding, so the Rangers will get their second power play. Sandlack came out. He's a very physical player. He's in the 208 pound range and he likes to bump and grind that time he got caught for holding so the Rangers have a good chance here to start the second period on a positive note Willie Huber again up front on the power play Ron Greshner on the point for his playmaking abilities Huber destined to go right to the front who was the best at ever doing that that you recall well that's a pretty good question I remember Johnny Busick did it very well for Boston he was huge and very very tough to move in his heyday in Boston Billy Huber goes at 6-5, 2-25. Don Maloney checks, but got it to Huber. Dumped along to Padubny. Moving to the front, both Huber and Don Maloney, but Maloney has to go after this one. To Padubny, checked by Brent Peterson, and the puck cleared by Garth Butcher. The only thing that might have been lost in the 24 seconds early in the second period were two thundering checks by Garth Butcher, and those were the only two. Butcher and Sandlack on the right side. Butcher right defenseman, Sandlack a right winger. Boy, they like to bump, and they're strong individuals. Ron Greshner away from the four checking of Sutter to Padubny. You know, you can take that minus 15 with Sutter and just throw it out the window. He's played well for this hockey club. He's an underrated player. Two people they got this summer, Barry Peterson and Rich Sutter. They're not going to turn a franchise around immediately, but they're good, honest players. You talk about a team that doesn't score too much. They need the checkers, and Sutter certainly is good at that. McKegney goes in, bumps with Dave Richter. Still, the battle continues. 35 seconds left power play. A weak toss toward Giles. They out. Putting in on a breakaway. If he can catch up and swoop his Greco. Right in. He looks around, he's got nobody to pass it to. 
so he goes to the net. He's on the left side of the ice again. The Roos, who made the original bad pass in his own zone, can't get back to make the play. A shorthanded goal for Vancouver, their fourth shorthanded goal of the year. Rico with a pure hat trick, getting his team second, third, and fourth goals of the night without any interruption. Icing called against the Rangers. And with the second period beginning as the first had run for a full 20 minutes. Sour for the Rangers and inspired for Vancouver. A faceoff will come back near Van Beesbrook. Look at Screeko cut in, and Van Beesbrook tried to poke check him, but Screeko has very, very quick hands. He read the poke check, got around John Van Beesbrook, and hit the open net. Again, moving from his right to his left, Screeko scores the goal. Ridley for the Rangers, along with Kelly Miller. Up front, and also it's Tony McKegney. Miller playing the right side, McKegney the left. From the faceoff, it's Kurt Giles. His defense partner is Shell Samuelson, but the pass too far for his reach. And thrown back out by Lidster. Right out of the penalty box came Sandlack, but on with this now is Miller. Miller feeding to McKegney. Score! Tony McKegney! And the Rangers get their first. Well, that Vancouver goal that was just scored, that was from Peterson and Richter. That was Squeako's 11th. And the Rangers come back. Tony McKegney with a good low shot. This is very similar to the goal he scored late in that last Edmonton game where he shot the puck low, the long side, the catching hand of the goaltender, Brodeur. Brodeur's way out playing the angle, but look at how accurate the shot is. Just inside the goal post, and the Rangers get there first with Phil Esposito behind them on the bench. 2.32, elapsed time in the period, the time of McKechnie's goal. And for McKechnie playing in his fifth game with the Rangers, that's his fourth goal to go with two assists, so he's better than a point a game with his new club. Vancouver again, we got to talk about how they clog up the middle. McKechnie right, yeah. stayed wide. He stayed wide. They got the puck to him, and he scored a goal. Edmonton is the best in the league at getting away from the system of clogging up the middle. Montreal tried to clog up the middle on, on Edmonton a lot. Edmonton can beat it because they have natural and raw speed. Follow through on the thought with another question in a moment here as Deblois is just carried gently to the boards by Stan Smeal. Laidlaw wraps up with Tambellini. Erickson able to pull it away. Jan Erickson looks. Forehander wide. Kissio keeps it moving, but Michelle Petit there to take over for the Canucks. Dumps it along for Taylor Hall, and then Tambellini guides it out. McKegney's sixth goal from Miller at 2.32. That was just 33 seconds after Vancouver had scored the shorthanded goal. Shift change on for the Canucks. They bring out Sandlack as well as Grieco and Barry Peterson. Moving with it at center ice is Podubny. Podubny sized up by Richter. Slammed to the boards and glass. Lance guides it, but into the glove of Patrick. Greshner right in on goal with his attempt. And it's Richter and a tap from Peterson. And thrown down, angling for Grieco, who's defended by Patrick. Sandlack tries to center. Screeko behind. After his fourth, but will pivot away. Then to Sandlack. James Patrick after him. And this one must be played at center ice. Things calmed down a bit there in the Rangers zone. They were playing a man on man. In the first period, you saw two Rangers going after one Canuck, and they got themselves into trouble as Vancouver moved the puck very quickly. When you mentioned clogging up the middle, what do we look for to see that? Just a lot of players in uh, well, the middle of the ice? The puck's on the left side. The right winger goes towards the middle of the ice. So they vacate that one side and clog it up. The teams have trouble passing the puck through people. The only way to do it is by accurate passing and quick speed. The best in the league, as far as I'm concerned, at getting away from clogging up the middle is the Edmonton Oilers. John Muckler and Sather, Glenn Sather watch that a lot, and they, they pre-scout teams, and when they see it, they advance and warn their teams, and they have that speed, they can get away with it. Shot back along by Butcher, Ridley can't keep, and this is Rich Sutter giving it across to Sundstrom. Sundstrom turning, got a shot in on goal that Van Beesbrook turned away. 16 shots for the Canucks and 13 for the Rangers after the Canucks got the first eight of the game. McKegney spins, Rich Sutter checks, Huber drills one, and that's guided away quickly by the stick of Richard Brodeur. Lidster cross ice to Sundstrom. He and Laidlaw go after it, and Laidlaw rams him to the board. Tanty just taken down by Willie Huber. 
And a four-man cluster brings about the whistle of Bob Hall. 14.32 to go. Second period of play. Spreeko with three. Sandlack's second minor of the period. The first one for holding. This time it's called interference as he was right inside that goal crease on top of Van Beesbrook before the puck got in there. That's why the call. On with it comes James Patrick. Patrick and Don Maloney, as well as Padubny, LaRousse, and Huber are the Rangers out for this power play. Quickly a shift change as Rich Sutter hops over the boards for Vancouver. Sundstrom out as well, and the usual defensive tandem for the Canucks of Lidster and Butcher. Lidster can't reach this one. He and Padubny go after it. Rich Sutter moves in for help. A minute and a half to go on the power play. 12-10 remaining in the second period. It's 4-1 Vancouver. Willie Huber a drive. Oh, deflected, then it hit the left post as Padubny got a piece of it. Butcher loses it to LaRouche. Back to Padubny. Backhander. Score! That's the power play goal. Let's start complaining. Brochure is rolling in pain. His left knee appears to be bothering him. A power play goal. The Rangers made a change. They put Huber back on left point instead of using him up front on the power play. Now let's watch how the puck goes out in front and Padubny's going to get control of it. A good pass from LaRouche to Padubny. Now go to the net. See in front. That's Lidster pushing Don Maloney into the goaltender of Brodeur. It was Lidster pushing the Ranger player right there on the top of their end of the screen and that's why there was no penalty call. Look at Lidster continue to push at Don Maloney. The puck has gone through everybody. And it's now a 4-2 hockey game. But Dubny, the power play goal, is fifth of the year. Bob Hall, the referee, was on that same side, the uh, side of the ice to the left of the net. And so he had a good look at it and noticed the force by Lidster of Maloney. Yeah, I think it was pretty obvious when we saw the when we saw the play. Brodeur, it was his left knee or left leg he was holding. Esposito's team fighting back now. A power play goal as they have scored the last two in this game after trailing 4-0. That goal assisted on by LaRouche as he got the puck into the slot for Padubny. Padubny's ninth of the year coming on the power play. LaRouche the lone assist as J.D. mentioned as you see the coach of the Vancouver Canucks, Tom Watt. Do you notice any difference in the emotion of the Rangers this period? Well, I thought towards the last five minutes of the first period, they started giving up a little bit less as far as glaring uh, chances went to Vancouver. Now, there may be a change of goaltending here for the Canucks. Wendell Young is getting up. Brodeur heading towards the bench. A lot of booing. You can hear the crowd upset with the referee Hall, but it was obvious that Lidster is the man to push Don Maloney into the goaltender. Now, Brodeur is now talking with Tom Watt. And it looks like he's headed for the dressing room. Yes, he is. Wendell Young. Well, heads into the game. One but one game in seven outings this year. Lost five and tied one. They have now made a change. The goal has been credited to Don Maloney, who was in the goal crease, and it must have deflected off of him. So that would mean LaRouche and Fadubny would have assists on the play. Wendell Young played his junior hockey in Kitchener, Ontario. A team that had Al McKinnis on that club. Al McKinnis, the fine defenseman with the Calgary Flames, whom the Rangers will see tomorrow night. A well, practice with him must have been fun. <laughs> Get the big shots. Lidster clears back out and away from Rich Sutter, who just allows it to go. Melnick moving behind. Teams at even strength, 4-2 to two, Vancouver ahead. Vancouver got the first four goals of the game, including one here early in the second. But the Rangers have answered back with two and taken down on the play Kelly Miller. Back through with it is Sundstrom. Has Sutter ahead on the left, but controls it himself, then drops. Sutter moves it over to Garth Butcher for a shot. And coming out to challenge was Van Beesbrook. It's dumped by Giles, but on the back of the goal, then swung loose on a good reaction by Erickson. Kurt Giles advances it to McKechnie. The tap misses for Ridley, and oh, taking a run at him was Lowry. Lands will go to chase. So that changes. Maloney his fourth on the power play from LaRouche and Padubny. They drop it back in, and Samuelson goes after it. Brent Peterson checks with him, and they rule a stoppage of play. 10.53 to go in the second. You're watching Rangers hockey on MSG Network. 
We bring beating Buffalo tonight 6-1. To Hartford 4, St. Louis nothing. Washington and Detroit a three-all tie. L.A. and Winnipeg. That game's still underway and no report. Wendell Young in goal for Vancouver now with Brodeur out with an injury to his left leg. Young is a hard-working goaltender, very aggressive goaltender. So we'll see him move out a lot and challenge the shooters. He's well-liked by his teammates because of his work habits. This tipped out as Wendell Young comes in in the early stages of a second period, which has seen the Rangers come back and get to. Stan Smeal checked into Van Beesbrook, and that'll cost the Rangers a couple. Shell Samuelson says, why? A big shell will go to the penalty box, and Vancouver will come out of this with its third power play opportunity. This will be his second minor of the game. Watch in front. Stan Smeal going to the net. Sh Samuelson pushes away at him and Smale follows up goes into the goal and that's why the call this one coming at 924 and so Vancouver which has scored on six of its last 24 power play opportunities that's a uh, 25 percent clean will go at it again using Smeal on the right wing Screco, who has three goals in the game on the left side and Barry Peterson the center Tambellini back at one point and Lidster the other Throughout this season, Vancouver's specialty teams have been better on the road than they had been at home. Yet tonight, they have a power play goal and they have a shorthanded goal. You know, the, the interest was so high here initially, of course, when the franchise came and then uh, when they had a Stanley Cup finalist four seasons ago. But it has certainly waned, and Vancouver's had attendance troubles now consistently for the last few years. Ooh, booming check thrown by Laidlaw. Back to the point. Lidster a drive, and that one went wide. Peterson takes over, has Tambellini at the back, looks things over, and then that one tipped away by Melnick. Gathered in by Stan Smeal, works to Tambellini. Over to Lidster. Tried a cross-icer for Smeal, but that broken up by Kelly Kissio. And the Canucks must regroup at center ice. Some teams don't really work the points for their power play. They, they work it in deep. This time, Screeko a shot. Save and Beesbrook. And Barry Peterson controls for the Canucks. Then back over to Lidster, a shot, score! Five to two. That shot may have missed the net, yet I think it was Smeal in front, and the puck went off. Maybe it's Squeakle. Yes, it is. You can tell by the look on his face. The puck goes off the skate plate as he's being checked in front. Vancouver stay wide on this power play. Lidster makes the play. Look at it in front of the net. Right there, Squeakle. It was the blade of his stick. He's in great position. Lidster with a wonderful pass. It was not a shot. It was a pass. And it's popped home and a standing ovation here in the Pacific Coliseum for Petri Squeakle. Four goals on the evening, and we're only 10 seconds into the second half of the game. Two Canucks. Strico with goals 9, 10, 11, and 12. A perfect three goals uninterrupted. Then McKechnie and Maloney intercede, and then Strico gets his fourth. Laidlaw saying that may have been gone or deflected in off the skate play. That went off the stick play of Petri Strico. Perfect position. The Canucks worked that power play low because they had a forward on the point that was Steve Tambellini. They did not have Lands out there for the big shot. They worked it low on Litzner with a beautiful pass for the power play goal. And this one trapped by Wendell Young. So Young has been in just moments. Young has only been in just a few moments, but already he winds up being a plus one on the game. As you look at the score, Vancouver are two for three on the power play. They've had five shots, two goals during those power play chances against the best road penalty killing team in the league. Young directs over to Rich Sutter. Help came from Sundstrom to clear as far as James Patrick. This one brought in by Sutter. Feeds it across. Quick shot was wide from the stick of Sundstrom. That one knocked down from Bartell. Played to Sutter. And hitting high and hard, Willie Huber. Don Maloney converges. Able to knock it behind for James Patrick. Oh, and the Canucks just really swarming now. Bartell a shot, sticked away by Van Beesbrook. Oh, and they tucked one in front that caromed right across the goal mouth. That from Tony Tanti. 
LaRouche drops it back and Michelle Petit matched up with Bartel on defense clears it down. This will be an icing waved off as Samuelson just cruises and is watched quickly by Taylor Hall. Turnover from Huber. Hall spins one off the stick of Samuelson. Goes right after it and Samuelson and Huber team up on him. The Twin Tower is working over on defense. In deep is Greshner. Smeal pulled down and Bob Hall cranes his neck but decides not this time. LaRouche has it poke checked away by Tambolini and we see the aggressiveness of Vancouver coming to the fore as they are keeping the Rangers hemmed up. They're bumping and grinding as much as possible, especially in the neutral zone. They're making things happen. They're making the Rangers chase them. And they're just, they're playing a fine, fine hockey game. Have you seen any lull in what they've done so far tonight, Vancouver? Has it been solid from the start? It's been very solid, especially teams have done well, and their five-on-five five teams have done well. Tomorrow night, beginning at 8 o'clock, Chris Mullen and Joe Barry Carroll lead the Golden State Warriors into Madison Square Garden Network to take on the Knicks. All right here on Madison Square Garden Network. Vancouver made a goaltending change because of an injury to Brodeur. Wendell Young did not have a chance. They don't allow you to warm up. The Rangers have had one bad angle shot on them. That's all. They've got, you know, here's your chance. Maybe they get to a goaltender who may be tight. He never had a chance to warm up or do any stretching exercises or anything. But Vancouver have shut them down, the Rangers, that is. Stalling tactics by goalies forced that rule change. Agree or disagree, Mr. Davidson? Absolutely agree. You wouldn't have done that. Never. <laughs> Richter carried off. Deblois unable to control. Sandlack dumps. Along with it, Barry Peterson. Hopped over Skrico's stick. Shell Samuelson starts back. Big Shell hooked at by Skrico. Can't center because of the checking of Lidster. Barry Peterson connects on ahead to Sandlack. Kartner booms him down, but on with it comes Richter. McKechnie leaning on him. Kartner comes in, misses the check. Big shot by Lipster was wide. Kept for a forehander, and that deflects off the glass. Barry Peterson turns, but is checked by Ridley. Butcher keeping it in. Kept along by Barry Peterson, and here's Skrico with Sandlack in front. Skrico trying for five. Rolled behind, and Sandlack tries a stuffer. Blocked by Van Beesbrook, and rolled along by Deblois. Oh, and the Canucks just pouring around now with it comes Ridley for McKechnie's drive. He scores! Tony McKechnie with his second of the game. And it's 5-3, to three, Vancouver. That's what I meant by Young going in there cold. Not that it was not a good shot, but it's a long shot. And McKechnie has strength and he has velocity when he shoots the puck. Mike Ridley with a good setup, a little crossing pattern, and a great shot to the corner of the goal net. Now watch Ridley cross in front and drops the puck beautifully. Two Canucks go to Ridley, nobody goes to McKegney. He uses a slap shot and an accurate low shot once again, the same side where he scored his first goal of the hockey game. All right, so the focus is back to center ice and the Rangers have come from a deficit of three twice to narrow it to two. We saw quite a collision between Carpenter and Sandlack. They played together in the World Junior Championships Last January, they both played for Team Canada, so they have been teammates before. Mike Ridley feeds it back over off the boards for Giles. At the front is Jensen as Giles' shot is knocked down. Petit looks back ahead, moves out along with Sundstrom. And Sundstrom tries to split the defense. Petit in front, and that bounced off Giles, who can coolly control it toward the far boards where Rich Sutter moved in. Now the test continues away from Kelly Miller. It's sent. Giles wrapped up, but is able to get it behind to Melnick. Melnick working through to Jensen. Then to the centerman on the line, Ridley. Ridley moves. Has a man moving in front. It's Kelly Miller. Checked tightly by Tanti and couldn't get a good shot away. Bartell rolls, moves to take it himself, but instead it's Brent Peterson out on a two-on-two -two with Rich Sutter. Drop is to Sutter. Moving on him is Huber. Sutter right in front. Took a chop from Huber. And Big Willie will come off the ice because of it. Ridley and Samuelson. The assists on McKechnie's seventh. Fifth as a Ranger. Flashed at Sutter and broke the hockey stick of Rich Sutter. We mentioned earlier in the broadcast, Sutter likes to drive to the net. Watch the stick of Huber slash across and break that of Sutter's stick. And the Canucks, who are two for three on the power play, get a chance again. Come on, work, work here. Come on, Gabe, come on, Gabe. Come on now. 
You heard the voice of Jack McElhargy, one time Vancouver Canuck, Philadelphia Flyer, Hartford Whaler, assistant coach. We mentioned earlier about Phil Esposito's brief stint as an assistant. It's in the same definition as Don Jackson. It was a couple of games I understand he was injured as a Ranger. <laughs> well, at least he has some experience. <laughs> Both those power play goals have been scored by Skrikel. How about Chicago? Are they struggling? I understand in Philadelphia last night, they did not dress Denny Savard. They left Kurt Fraser at home on the road trip back in Chicago. Then they had a closed door meeting for over an hour after that defeat in Philadelphia. Things are not going very well for the Chicago Blackhawks. All right, J.D., following the logical order of things, is the next thing a trade or the next thing a change? Who knows? I, I really don't know. You know, I just, I'm really befuddled by the Chicago situation. I just don't know. Smeal angles. There is Skrico. Sent further down by Tom Laidlaw. And it's cleared back out by Miller. Oh, was he boomed by Stan Smeal. Don Maloney, as well as Miller up front. Samuelson working with Laidlaw and back. In case you're just joining us, 5-3. And the outcome of this one's still in doubt here. As Grico's pass is cut off by Laidlaw. At one time, Vancouver seemed to dominate, but here's a chance in front for Barry Peterson, foiled by Samuelson, and a diving play by Don Maloney as he punches it back out. Tambellini connecting over to Lidster. Rather quiet sort of house here tonight. We mentioned uh, about half a house or so in attendance, and they seat 16,500 and change. To a side, continue the battle, moving in as Sundstrom, meeting him as Samuelson. Late loss sweeps, kept by Lance. Off of Tanti. Sundstrom out in front, but Samuelson able to read that one and give out to Erickson. And Jan Erickson moving down the ice as the Rangers make a shift change. Following through is Erickson. Now he picks up some teammates as Kelly Kissio drifts nearby, but it's Rich Sutter controlling before that out to Petit. And Petit just goes in, forcing again the chop of Shell Samuelson. Striding for this is Kelly Kissio. Big drive into the glove of Young. That was a tricky shot because that puck was rolling and Young kept his eyes on it. He followed that puck right into his catching mitt. Sundstrom took a chop from Kissio. Rolled for Hall, but it went all the way to Sandlack. Intercepted, cleared by Patrick, not out. The shot right on goal, and Van Beesbrook saves not only the initial by Lance, but also the rebound of Taylor Hall. Taylor Hall playing just the second game of the season for the Canucks. He was called up as he got to the front of the net. Watch the puck as Van Beesbrook's going to have a rebound to contend with two Canucks there. They go and drive to the net. Before James Patrick can get back there, Taylor Hall had a second swipe at the puck. Van Beesbrook made the good save. Left Pizzito, John Jackson, Joe Murphy, one of the members of the training staff at the Ranger bench. Three seconds to go on the minor penalty to Willie Huber. Reschner to take the face off opposite Brent Peterson as John Van Beesbrook checks the clock himself. There you see the time remaining in the second of a two-goal Vancouver lead. Drive by Butcher, and that ricocheted off the mark. Jammed along by Smeal. Smeal tries to follow, but Van Beesbrook asserts himself, passing along to Huber fresh from the box. Back through Ron Greshner, along with McKechnie. Greshner just hooked at by Butcher, who's lost his stick. Drive by McKechnie! He has the hat trick! And the Rangers are back to it, then one! Right. When you have a shooter and you're hot, shoot the puck, and that's what Tony McKechnie's doing. Previous games this year, he seemed to be shooting the puck very high, and Grant Fuhrer robbed him a number of times. Now he's getting the puck down. Ron Greshner made the play on Butcher to set up McKechnie, and look at that shot again. Three goals from McKechnie in this hockey game. All three low to the glove side of the goaltenders. McKegney got himself in a good position, and Greshner had made a good play to get around the defenseman Butcher to keep his balance even to get around Butcher, and McKegney scores the goal. We have a 5-4 hockey game. We were eavesdropping on Phil Esposito for a moment just after the goal was scored, and perhaps you couldn't hear. He was saying, keep it on the ice just like I was telling you. Rangers back to within one, and they started out with Giles missing for McKechnie. Instead, it is Dave Richter on the Vancouver defense, turning it over to Barry Peterson. Up for Strico, but broken up by LaRouge. Walt Podupny chops in. And Young sees that one hop off his stick. Lance moves to the corner, and McKechnie was the first one there, though wedged off. It's Rick Lance starting back out. Hands it across for Sandlax drive. Hit the goal post, and ricochet to the back of the net. One of the rare times of the season that we see that. 
Face off will be inside because Van Biesbrick just touched the puck before it stuck on the back of the net. Second period, Greshner and Huber, the assists on McKechnie's sixth as a Ranger, eight of the year and third of the night at 16-21. These things change quickly with Young going in and as you mentioned, John, uh, not having a warm up and looking a little stiff. Rangers have kept it on the ice on him and have beaten him twice since he entered the contest. In relief of Brodeur, who, in case you're just joining us, was injured when Lipster checked Don Maloney into him as a Ranger goal was scored. Just received word on Brodeur's strained ligaments in his left knee. He certainly will not be back in this hockey game. It's very difficult to assess how serious the injury is. There's Wendell Young. Way back in 84 when the Olympics were happening, he was beaten out by Darren Elliott, who's now in Los Angeles, and Mario Goslin from Quebec. Otherwise, he would have been with the Olympics. So three goaltenders all belong in the National Hockey League that the Olympics had come to camp for them, the Canadian Olympic team, that is. Tony Tanti moving on. Drops it back for Rich Sutter. Angles for Tanti. Checked off on the play by Willie Uber. Tanti just throws it in front, and this is Samuelson. Would the call go to Frank Caprice? Would he be the first call up? Pass over two lines stops the clock. I would think so, yes. Frank Caprice. The miners. There is Pierre. He uh, explained that the light heavyweight bout was the best of the night with a broken nose in the 10th round, deciding a championship. He and Barry Beck were attending that last evening. Rich Sutter talking it up on the Vancouver bench as the Rangers have scored four of the last five goals in this hockey game. Vancouver always in a battle with Los Angeles for that last playoff spot in the Smythe Division. Lipster fires, and that one ricocheted off Van Beesbrook and Laidlaw. Thrown in front again, and this booted away by Melnick. And on with it is Ridley. Couldn't complete the pass to Miller because of Butcher's check. Greco with four goals in the game. Tony McKechnie of the Rangers with three. Score is five to four Vancouver in the last minute 55 of the second period here from the Pacific Coliseum. We hope you're enjoying it tonight on Madison Square Garden Network. Erickson ties his man. Trying to jam it along with Ridley and it's Lipster with a drive that's wide. Miller chops it away from Garth Butcher and then Butcher goes flying. Turning with this is Lipster. And the wedge hops for Melnick. Along it's sent to Kelly Miller. Erickson comes to the bench for a shift change that brings out Lucien Deblois. Miller sidled up to by Peterson, and with that we get a halt to play and a minute 20 to go. We mentioned earlier about the rare time that pucks lodge in the back of the nets, as John can attest. That wasn't always the case, but with the redesign of the net, it's much more taut back there. That's another emphasis that they have for play to continue in the NHL, as you see Lucien Deblois who John mentions will get more playing time now. And it's a chance for Devlois. Remember, he, he did not play very much in the playoffs last year when Montreal won the Stanley Cup. And he, he's a competitor who likes to play, and here's his chance. The coaching staff of the Rangers thought that he was responsible for, goal, for some goals against. The previous coaches, that is. And here's his chance to play. Between periods, continuation of John Davidson's interview taped this morning with Bill Esposito, interim coach and general manager of the Rangers, and then the reaction of Ranger players to the release of Ted Sater and Red Hicks and Jack Birch, and also to Bill Esposito. Here is Peterson, cross ice to Rich Sutter, has Lowry churning up the wing, but the shot went right into Big Willie Huber. Freshner, the third man in to take it. In the final 40 seconds of the period, connects with Don Maloney. This is Deblois, jammed by Petit as he threw in. Lands, angles it around for Rich Sutter. And Sutter just brings it back out for the Canucks. Play a little sluggish right now. Teams well, are changing lines in the last 24 seconds. It's almost sluggish, but it's, it's more of the teams are holding each other up. It's not that free-flowing game we saw in the first period, but it was a one-sided flowing game. Here's Kissio, turning away from Litster. And reading that was Grico, anticipating the pass in front, which would have come to Podubny. The final five seconds of the period, as this one trickles to the corner. And with that, the second period will come to a close, but certainly a productive period for Phil Esposito and his Rangers. They entered the period down 3 nothing. They have come back from three goal deficits twice. 
as they went up by uh, a count they were down by a count of four to nothing early in the second period then we're down by two on two occasions and fought back to where it is now just a one goal deficit after two shots on goal in the period for the Vancouver Canucks 11 for the Rangers 10 underway third period only 26 seconds gone an offside pass called against Vancouver as we review the second period Skrico his 11th at 159 then came McKechnie with the first his sixth at 232 Don Maloney Skrico again and that for him was his fourth of the night and then McKechnie's two which you saw just moments ago it's the Peterson line for Vancouver with Kulak on the right wing and this is only his second appearance of the night and on the opposite side is Petri Skrico that one glassed back out by Kurt Giles. Oh, and then Richter was hit hard by Kissio. Kelly Miller ties. Richter locked up with Kissio once more. Peterson shoots, but right into the glove of James Patrick. Kissio, or rather, uh, Giles fans, and now it's Patrick into the glove of Kissio, playing off for Kelly Miller. Miller hit by Butcher, and Butcher able to tie up that Ranger thrust so that Kulak can unwind. Delayed offside is wiped out. Striding across to get it is Kelly Kissio. Rangers have been out of this one a couple of times by scores of four to nothing and then later on five to two. But they've fought back on the strength of two Tony McKechnie goals on Wendell Young to be within one. Along the near side, it is chopped back out by Ridley. And Rick lands to get it on defense. For the Rangers, is it just keeping on with what they were doing latter stage of the period? Sandstrom, uh, Sundstrom shot, pardon me, knocked away by Van Beek. They're not giving up two on ones and three on twos, Mike, and that's the key. They're keeping the shots to the outside now instead of directly in front of Van Beesbrook. The Rangers are picking away, picking away, and hence we have a close game. Peterson does not choose Smeal, instead Petit, but that checked away by LaRouche, and here come the Rangers. If they hurry, it's a two on one. LaRouche with McKechnie wide, fired himself. Young answer, center, score! Mike Ridley has tied the game with 2-0-1 gone in the third. It was a play where Vancouver broke into the Rangers zone. The Rangers broke up the play, and as soon as they broke up the play, a three-on-two developed. Vancouver played the three-on-two very well. LaRouche shot from a bad angle. The save was made, yet LaRouche followed up the play. Watch LaRouche here. He's going to take the shot. The save's made. He follows it up, chips it in front. Ridley had good position and popped the puck up high. So LaRouche followed up his own shot, got the rebound, and Mike Ridley was in the proper position. We have a tie hockey game. Man, oh man, the Rangers have fought back with three successive goals, and now it is the Canucks who are feeling the heat. Hartner goes in along with Brent Peterson. Converging Lowry, taking is Greshner. Ron Greshner drops it off to Don Maloney, plays it up for an empty wing. And it is Lidster clearing back out off Kartner, played by Garth Butcher. Butcher heading it along for the Canucks, who are in the midst of a shift change. Smeal banks it, but Kartner takes it. A pass over for Don Maloney, and then tap back out. Butcher waits and then sails in. Samuelson striding back for it, and Skrico wedged off by Big Shell Samuelson. Deploie with a quick toss over to Greshner. Greshner hit by Sandlack, but not until he lofted it out. The shots are 26-22, the Canucks, as Sandlack moves in again, clips one for Skrico that's knocked down, and Chris Jensen takes over for the Rangers. Big Dave Richter out on defense now with Lands. Petit and Bartel will be the next shift out for the Canucks as they're just getting positioned at the bench for that change. Giles clears, Land stops. Tries to play back ahead, but it's Giles who will go back to get it. Boy, if you gave up on this one earlier and you're a Ranger fan, you have been heartened by quite a comeback. The other night in Edmonton, it was from a 4-1 downer in the third period, and tonight, it was at 1.4-0. The game now knotted at five. James Patrick. Away from Tanti and back out. Bartell matched up with Petit. Sundstrom flips back ahead to Rich Sutter. Leaped into that check by Tom Waitlaw. And it's Podupny controlling for the Rangers and again flipping back out. Rangers much, much more disciplined in the latter half of this hockey game. You can see them bumping, holding people up. And Vancouver not getting quality shots at all now. Rich Sutter moving for it. James Patrick got a piece of it, just enough to hang things up. 
Patrick goes for it again. Padupne moving there as Patrick locked up with Sandstrom. Thrown back to the point, and Lidster unable to keep it in. Sundstrom showing some good strength when he forechecks. He's bringing the pucks out of the corners. Quick shot by Sundstrom, and Jensen has it for the Rangers. The 27th Vancouver shot. Through with it is Kelly Miller. Wrapped up by Taylor Hall. Lidster turning and right back out again. Icing waved off, so it's Larry Melnick controlling for the Rangers. McKegney with three, Ridley and Maloney, the other goal scorers for the Rangers. Rich Sutter with the opening goal of the game for Vancouver. And the next score by Skrico. As on comes Kelly Kissio. Tries to get by, but is taken out of the play by Lidster. Pops it along, but it came back to Kissio. Stuffer attempt, knocked down by Young. And played by Stan Smeal. As two men moving along with him, angles it off the glass, hoping for Taylor Hall, who allows it to go to Tambellini. Tambellini tried to roll it behind, but instead it's gotten by Karkner and once again dumped back out. Lands along for Schmiel. Taylor Hall and Schmiel play once more. Tambellini moving in. That one blocked away by Van Beesbrook. Tony McKechnie flips it along. Schmiel can't get it. Now it's centered to Schmiel. Had to hurry the shot and Melnick in the way. He said something there very special. He had to hurry the shot. New York keeping Vancouver to the outside. When they do penetrate and get inside the slot area, they're being harassed. McKechnie flips one in front and Young has to trap as right on the doorstep, Mike Ridley. You're watching Rangers Hockey on MSG Network. We bring the Garden home. Changed one goal back. The second Ranger goal back to Padubny, his ninth. That was a power play goal from LaRouche and Maloney. That's how they originally saw it. They had changed it. Now they've changed it back. There's one that shanked off the stick of Wendell Young and sailed into the seats. This program is authorized by Madison Square Garden Productions Incorporated solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this event, including the imposition of a charge for viewing the program without the express written consent of Madison Square Garden Productions Incorporated, is prohibited. Michelle Petit for the Vancouver Defense, and for the Rangers, Kurt Giles. Wendell Young sets up. It is Bartell moving it to Petit. Guided ahead for Sandlack, but by him. Giles. Samuelson shoots back in. Reichner waiting, but it's punched back out again by Sandlack. What the Rangers have done have made a very significant change here. Erickson's playing right wing to check Skrico. Erickson's the best checking forward the Rangers have, and Skrico, of course, has the four goals. Everywhere Skrico's going, Erickson was staying with him. Yeah, I'll bet they've met an international play at one time against one another as well as NHL. Don Maloney's pass lost to Peterson and again jam back in. The Squeako just skated off for a line change. Erickson did the same thing. Don Maloney can't control and it's Butcher just sliding it back. Hurt Giles but that bounced off Rick Sutter and an offside is called. Earlier in the game we mentioned the last time that a whole season transpired with no coaching changes being 66 67 as you see Kurt Giles the coaches that year to Blake in Montreal. Who is the guy in Toronto. Punch him luck. It's gotta got to be it. Punch him luck. He was Mr. Toronto Maple Leafs for a lot of years. Billy Ray in Chicago, Sid Abel in Detroit. Who in New York? Abel. Abel Francis. And Boston? You know, I wasn't. I was thinking about that previously, and I wasn't all that sure. I took a shot. I would say Harry Simpson. Right. His so rookie year of coaching. Very fortunate. That's the one. That was one I found the toughest, simply because, as you say, his rookie year. Dubney's pass. Cut off by Tanti and slid back in. Want to correct ourselves on Los Angeles' string lately. We had mentioned that they had lost only one in the last eight. That should be one in the last six. A victory tonight over the Winnipeg Jets. 12.40 to go, third period of play. This game is not at five. Dressing 11 forwards. They have to use somebody on a double shift. Here they're using Kissio on right wing with Padovia and Jensen. Padovia and Jensen were the 10th and 11th forwards dress. In other words, they didn't have the set line. Parkner and Patrick the defense. It's offense for the Rangers now as turning with it is Jensen. Who was he hit to the boards by Richter in front. Deploa couldn't penetrate. Tambellini turning for the Canucks. Has lost it to center ice and so Melnick just flips it back in. They make them chase. As soon as the puck got into Vancouver's zone 
Kissio skated over and Deblois took a spot. Here the Rangers not for checking two men just one man deep. They want to make sure they don't give up an odd man situation when you have a tie score in the third period. Stan Smeal slots it wide. And that one was a hard stopper for the fans here as well as for John Van Beesbrook it appeared. Did that float on him? Uh, it seemed to, I don't know, it's a long shot. It seemed to have handcuff him somewhat. It went wide, but not wide by very much. Tom Watts, whose hockey club had scored the fewest goals of anybody in the league this year at 55 going into this game, has scored five, but a team that would shut out, had shut out Calgary their last game, has given up five. So he can't be too happy about his goals against. Would you imagine that Phil Esposito would be operating tonight without any sort of scouting report on Vancouver? Lou Jankowski, one of the Rangers scouts, is here in the audience. He was at the game and has watched Vancouver a lot lately. Excuse me, he was at the game last night watching Calgary and Pittsburgh, but he knows Vancouver quite well. And Phil Esposito went to him and wanted to find out some information on the club. Lou is a scout for the Rangers of Western Canada. Kurt Giles advancing for McKechnie. Tried to play just a little carom shot, you saw, and Barry Peterson clears back out. Giles once more, but this is followed up by Petit, nudged along to Peterson. Just got a little of the hip check from Giles. Angled to the corner for Strico, who couldn't play the bounce because of Erickson's checking. Bartell tries to chop it along. And Erickson is just, as John mentioned, man-to-man -man on Strico. He hasn't been more than six feet away from him, all over the ice here. Kulak pulling away from Mike Ridley, starting to shell Samuelson's side and just carried right into two officials. And again, Skrico went to the bench for a change. Erickson did the same thing, and Skrico on that last shift, again, a non-factor. McKegney drops back to Samuelson and back on for McKegney. Rich Sutter tried to take him out of the play with body and stick and failed. Dropped into the glove of Kartner. Turning away from Sundstrom, then down goes Tanty. No penalty action here in the third period and not since the latter stages of the second. Kelly Miller taken down by Butcher as Bob Hall watches on. Buck dumped along and Kartner tried to control, but the Canucks are able to clear it out of play and get the halt to time. 10-19 to go, third period of play. And the score remains 5-5. On the right, it is Pierre LaRouche. Right defense Melnick, left defense Laidlaw, chopped out by Rich Sutter. Melnick looks toward Laidlaw. This is his play to make. Through Tanty and taken by Kissio. Up the wing for Kelly Miller. Miller watched by Garth Butcher. Taken out, but LaRouche had an attempt that's knocked away by Wendell Young. Still the Rangers working. They've come from a 5-2 deficit to get a 5-5 tie here in the third. And we're just over the halfway point of this third period. Butcher drops it back in. You saw Miller drop the puck back for LaRouche. When you have a tie score, you better make sure when you drop the puck, because if your drop pass doesn't work, the other team comes out against the flow and traps you. LaRouche a drive that sails wide. Kissio flips one in front. Taylor Hall for the Canucks. And Samuelson will give chase. Icing is the call. One of the rare stoppages on icing in the contest. 9.30 to go in the third. Game tied at five. Earlier tonight on MSG Network, Steffi Groff and Helena Sokova advanced to the semifinals of the Virginia Slims Championships. Join us tomorrow at noon for live semifinal action. We bring the garden home on Madison Square Garden Network. Sam Rosen, Mary Carrillo, Steve Flink. With all the courtside action. As Bill Esposito looks out at one of the longest term Rangers. Longest among the current Rangers, Ron Greshner. Rangers lining up here with Jensen on left wing, even though he's a right winger. Maloney, a left winger, over on the right side. They want Greshner to draw the puck back and get a good angled shot, I would suppose. He'll have to get it from Brent Peterson. And there was the play in front, and Jensen had a shot that was knocked down. See, that's why Jensen was over there. He got that shot on his forehand. Here comes Lowry for Vancouver. Lays it into the glove of Van Beesbrook. Swings it right back out, wanting to connect with Jensen. It's a good play. The pass was just not quite accurate. The players didn't appear to be ready for it, but when a goaltender uses his goal stick a lot, like Van Beesbrook just did, that certainly helps the club. Right through it comes to Greshner, moving with Don Maloney. Locked up with Smeal, and just in the spinning of Greshner, the play carried in offside. 
8.56 left in this third period of play. In case you've just joined us, Los Angeles, Hartford, and Quebec, the winners tonight in the NHL, Washington and Detroit tied. And Chris Jensen, who had a goal in Edmonton, comes to the bench on a shift change. That results in Erickson being moved out opposite Strico. Ridley and McKechnie the front line. Jensen a little more healthy now. That shoulder has gotten stronger. Van Beesbrook, who was beaten for four goals early into the second period, has been tough. That fourth goal that had beaten them was 159 of the second period. Of course, the quality of shots the Rangers have given up haven't been quite the same since that point in the hockey game. Back of the net, that one was lodged for a moment. Rangers trying to knock it loose. Mike Ridley battling behind the goal. And they get the stoppie. Does Wendell Young look any sharper to you at all no. or still vulnerable? No, when LaRouche took that shot a few minutes ago that missed the net, it was a hard shot, but Young never really picked up on the shots. You can see that in the goaltender. He never reacted quickly. He's put in a very, very difficult situation. The rules read you cannot warm up if you come into the game midway through. He didn't get a warm up even though there was an injury. And I don't think that's fair to back up goaltenders. What would you have them do? A Stop the game? Uh, yes, absolutely. Why not? Now, what did you do to get the rule changed, John? <laughs> Lobby. No, I guess. What did I do? No, no. Ask, ask Al Arbor what he did. He's, he's the, the, uh, the coach of the Islanders at the time who changed the rules, as far as I'm concerned, the way he was switching goaltenders late in hockey games to buy rest periods for his hockey club. Relief pitchers in baseball get to come in and throw the ball a few times. Why shouldn't goaltenders? What would you suggest? Uh, 10, 15 shots? Uh, 15 shots anywhere in that area. Just enough time to at least stretch your, your muscles. Get loose a little bit. They just simply put him in the goal, drop the puck, and the game went on. Mike Ridley locked up by Butcher. McKechnie turning with it for the Rangers. Tony McKechnie took a chop from Barry Peterson. McKechnie in front. Score! Four goals for McKechnie. And the Rangers have come from a 5-2 deficit to lead 6-5. Incredible. When we watch this goal, watch in front. Mike Ridley is stuck in front of the net, and he is causing all sorts of havoc. McKegney with his strength just wraps it around. Watch in front. Look in front. Ridley's right in there. He's being pushed from behind, and that's why the goaltender lost his balance. When the goaltender lost his balance, the puck went underneath him. Look at in front. Right there, you see Ridley being pushed. The puck slides underneath the goaltender. McKegney, his fourth goal, puts the Rangers in the lead for the first time in this game. One there turn in front. LaRouche scores. And it's seven to five. This time, Mike, it's work in the corner. The Rangers have to fight at the Vancouver Canucks here in the third period. They get the loose puck in the corner, put it in front. Esposito trying to stay calm. His team has a lead here now by two goals. Look at it in the corner. Lands over skates the puck. Debluwa finishes the check, looks. Now he pops it in front, and there's a rebound. And LaRouche is all alone on his forehand. He popped it. Wendell Young had no chance. That pass out by Debluwa was deflected. And it was a surprise shot on Wendell Young. LaRouche was wide open. John Davidson mentioned earlier that chances were being given to LaRouche as well as Deblois, and they team up for the seventh goal by the Rangers. Boy, when you think back, midway in the second period, five to two, and the Rangers have gotten five unanswered goals, three of them by Tony McKechnie, one by Ridley, and the other by Pierre LaRouche. Anders Hedberg, six years ago, had the last four-goal game by a Ranger. Laidlaw behind his own goal with a play through for Deblois, but Taylor Hall takes it away. McKegney from Ridley at 11.41. LaRouche, his seventh from Deblois at 11.53. McKegney's ninth. He scored 15 goals all last season. Nine he has this year to this point. Our thanks to Barry Watkins, who is busy keeping statistics in this high-scoring affair tonight. A dozen goals scored in the last five by the Rangers as Van Beesbrook shuts one off. Tambellini short side into the glove of Van Beesbrook a hole. Tambellini got Van Beesbrook down there, but Van Beesbrook had his catching hand up, and that's how he stopped the shot. Faceoff will be in the Rangers zone. for the Rangers as they have come back. They now lead 7-5. This is the first face-off this period in the Rangers zone. Garth Butcher dumps. Taylor Hall has it. Litster at center ice. 
Kelly Miller bothering him. Litzter and Miller fighting for possession, and Miller just guides it further. Inspired comeback by the Rangers after what John Davidson described as butterflies in the first period. Very listless period in which the Canucks scored three times. They added one early in the second to make it 4 nothing. In front, it's away from Hall, and Van Beesbrook knocks it toward the corner where Samuelson takes care of Hall. That went off the skate of Don Maloney and played by Kurt Giles. Crisp pass, it off Miller. Lands off the boards for Hall. 6-10 to go, third period. Rangers doing a much better job of stopping Vancouver from going from defense to offense, which they did the first half of the game very, very well. The Rangers much quicker, playing smarter hockey in the neutral zone. And Vancouver, look, now they're trying to go on offense. They can't. Rangers are checking. Nowhere to pass the puck. Was there any turning point in the game, or at least a part of it, that you'd have to say uh, involved Brodeur got the Brodeur? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Reschner. Wendell Young likes to play aggressive. He was way out of the net, and Ron Grester had enough time to have a shave and have a cup of coffee before he made the play. He drops his shoulder right here. He looks, nowhere to pass the puck. Watch him fake it, drops his shoulder. Young is now frozen. Goes to the outside, and he calmly puts the puck into the open side. That is a very well-played professional goal by Ron Grester. Man, oh man, are the people who are now watching this on a Saturday morning in New York and the metropolitan area believing what they are seeing with this Ranger comeback tonight. Ron Grester's first goal this season. McKechnie can't stop this one. Butcher plays back in for Rich Sutter. Chopped quickly along by James Patrick. McKechnie can't stop getting points. He got an assist on that goal along with Karkner. Four goal night for McKegney. Earlier, a four goal effort had been registered by Scrico. But then Erickson has taken care of him as Don Maloney tries a stuffer. And that one went off Tanty to center ice for Laidlaw's play. Tom Laidlaw connecting back along to Jensen, who just drops it where Garth Butcher will take over. How different is this game if Brodeur stays in? Radically? It's very, very difficult to say, but that's why the I, Rangers you. I wanted to give they, you a tough one. It is, but the Rangers certainly took advantage of what they were given, and that's the key point. Kissio trying to get through Lance and has written off the play. And Wendell Young gets sarcastic applause for tapping it along. Taylor Hall wedged off the play by Shell Samuelson, so it's drilled into the seats by Richter. 4.14 to go, third period. Rangers, 8-5 as Phil Esposito looks on from behind the Ranger bench. When Brodeur was injured, the goaltending was changed. Wendell Young went in. Another turning point had to be the putting of Erickson on Squeako. Squeako had scored four goals. He's been shut down ever since Erickson's been checking him. Taylor Hall turning it to Smeal, a backhander, and the stick play made by Van Beesbrook. Samuelson wraps Kelly Miller there, and Miller just taps it back out. Rangers have a comfortable enough lead now with a three goal advantage. They want to concentrate on defense. Giles to Podubny. And here comes Tony McKechnie. Flipping one for Miller. Miller controls and is checked by Smeal. Followed up though by Podubny. Poke check. Nice one by Lance. And back through comes Skrico. This time Skrico is not watched by Erickson. Maybe the Rangers will try to make that change. We have a penalty now. The first one in the period assessed by holding to Shell Samuelson at 16.32 and power play number five coming up for Vancouver. Samuelson's had one hooking call this game and two holding calls. He tried to get the man with his reach and followed through and with his big body, six foot six inches worth, dragged down. Vancouver two for four on their power play, seven shots on goal during those opportunities. John Van Beesbrook has not seen too much since the start of the Ranger comeback, but has reacted well when tested. And Big shot by Sandlack early in the period. Oh, did Sandlack just rammed Laidlaw to the boards and glass, and that drew a resounding bit of applause, though there hasn't been much Vancouver hitting since the very first minute of this third period, and a couple of checks by Butcher. And Sandlack. It is Sandlack trying to center. Puck played in front by Skrico. Slot Tambellini. Blocked down by Melnick. Tambellini whacked at by Erickson. 
They throw it behind, and it's Grieco pointing it to Lidster. Blocked away by Don Maloney, 2.45 to go in the third. A minute 15 left on the Vancouver power play as Rich Sutter hops over the boards. Tambellini to Lidster, and it's back in, but James Patrick there to collar it. Patrick for the Rangers, flips for Ridley, but it goes down on Young, and again, the house here giving Young some sarcastic applause. Rick lands with 2.22 left, leads it ahead. They try to angle on, but it is Kelly Miller being bumped. Then behind, it's taken over by James Patrick. Petit will go back down as well as Lance. Quiet crowd here. They celebrated especially loudly on Skrico's fourth. That was their biggest amount of noise of the night, and there's been so little since then. Offside called against Vancouver. John Davidson has gone downstairs, and he will hope to chat with that man as soon as this game is over. Bill Esposito with intensity, discussed through the first 20 minutes and really into the second early. When Skrico had three and Rich Sutter won and it was 4 nothing. But then on a goal by McKechnie and Podubny, the Rangers pulled back to within two. Skrico got his fourth to again make the deficit three. McKechnie closed off the scoring in the period, bringing the Rangers back to a 5-4 deficit. And you see here that there have been four Ranger goals in period three. It has been an eventful day in Rangers history. Bill Esposito's first day as coach. Momentous comeback. And for the Rangers, it appears the end of a three-game losing streak. And their most convincing win of the year, if it continues this way in the final minute 35, as all of their previous victories by one goal. Lance a drive, save Van Beesbrook. Rebound by Sutter, and Van Beesbrook answers that. John Van Beesbrook, though with not too much work in this period, has not gotten rusty. This is the typical feed the point on the power play opportunity for the Canucks. They drive to the net, and the chance came to Rich Sutter. Low on the glove side, but the pad of Van Beesbrook was there. Van Beesbrook, who has undoubtedly had his typical pregame chocolate bar today, a superstition that goes back to his young days in the suburbs of Detroit, Michigan, where he played, interestingly enough, for a couple of teams that were sponsored by Mike Illich, now the owner of the Detroit Red Wings. Tambellini will be in for this faceoff draw. He has Richter directly behind, big number five. Canucks control, Taylor Hall behind for Schmiel, but it's James Patrick with a minute 20 to go in the third. And again, Wendell Young has a Ranger dump out to play. Garth Butcher, Lidster moving it on. It's dropped again with a minute 10. Partner with help from Van Beesbrook and Smeal tried to get one away, but this is drilled back down by Ridley. Icing touch up made by Lidster. In case you missed a statistic that we passed along earlier in the last three and a quarter years, we've counted up 16 coaching changes during the season. And I think a lot of times in Vancouver's case tonight, they would have thought that uh, a team is going to be very inspired. They may not think in terms of the nervousness that a team under a new coach would have, but rather the inspiration. And I think anyone would think that the majority of those games by first coaches are won, but that's not the case. Only seven of the coaching games uh, by first-time coaches that we've noticed in the recent years have been won. Five of them have been lost in three ties, so it's not really a dominant situation. Phil Esposito will be joining John Davidson after the game as part of our post-game activities. Power play has subsided, so now it is five against five in attackers. Wendell Young remains in the Vancouver net, in case you're curious. This is a three-goal Ranger ball. Just lands, fires, and wide. Mike Ridley to take it back for the Rangers. Cross ices it over to Tony McKechnie. McKechnie has made such a difference in the Rangers tonight. Ridley a drive, and Young answers that one. Lands in the final half minute. Washington tied tonight, up to 18 points. So the Rangers, by virtue of this victory, will be only two points behind Washington for fifth. New Jersey idle tonight would be six points ahead of the Rangers in fourth place in the Patrick division, and that's where they draw the line. 
60 games from now at the end of the season five seconds to go butcher throws Giles knocks down and you'll see quite a celebration on the ice of an arena which has a meaningful silence in it now the Pacific Coliseum as the Rangers have just thundered back from a five to two deficit to post an inspired eight to five victory tonight general manager and interim coach Bill Esposito congratulates his troops on the ice as he indicated between periods that he felt the positive needed to be emphasized felt also that it hadn't been and boy who cannot be positive among the Ranger family after seeing this comeback tonight Tony McKechnie had four Ridley with one LaRouche with one Greshner with one and Podubny with one for the Rangers in a conquest of the Vancouver Canucks tonight at the Pacific Coliseum.